que tu rallumes ton micro. You, you are hearing me? Oui, c'est bon, c'est bon maintenant. C'est bon. Did you hear before? Okay, so I will start from the beginning. Oui. Uh, today, it is our lesson number 30. Exceptionally, we will talk in English and I will translate a little in Arabic. Uh, we welcome with us a great Vaidya Ayurvedic doctor and Brahman, man, Dr. Dharmendra Dubi. You are, uh, he, please, are you hearing us, Dr. Dharmendra? Dharmendra, please put on your micro. Yes, put on your mic, Dr. Ramendra. Oui, tu envoies un message. Yeah, are you listening? Oui, ah, c'est bon. Yeah. It's good. Okay? Good. Okay. Good. Okay. 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 You, you are hearing us? You listen? You hear us? Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing. Okay, mm. okay. So, we are, we will come with us a great Ayurvedic doctor and also a Brahman seeker, Dr. Dharmendra Dubi. I will introduce him in Arabic, so because maybe he know what I will tell. I was his student in Ayurveda and his patient for many times, and last time it was from one year. Sa'atahaddasu bidayatan bil Arabiya. كي أقدم طبيبا وباحثا روحيا مهما من الهند هو الدكتور دهارمندرا دوبي وقد تتلمست عليه في الأيورفيدا لسيما عندما كتبت كتابي الأيورفيدا والطب العربي وموسوعة الأيورفيدا الدكتور دهارمندرا دوبي هو من كبار الحاذقين في علم قراءة النبض وفي تقنية ما يسمى جس النبض وكي أشرح ما يمتلك من تقنية ومن تفوق في هذا المجال سأكتفي بروايتين أو ثلاثة عاينته عاينتهما مباشرة شاهدا عليهما Dr. Dhaimendra Dubi was in Lebanon, كان في لبنان العام 2009 وقمنا بمعاينات عديدة في مناطق مختلفة لسيما في الشوف والمرض وغيره أكتفي هنا أن أروي ما حصل لنا حصل لنا وما عايشناه في بعض المناطق كنا في الباروق وطلب مني قلت للدكتور هرمندرا بالأحرى أن سمة ولي كبير في هذه المنطقة هو الشيخ رحمه الله أبو حسن عارف حلاوي فطلب مني أن نقوم بزيارة لهذا الشيخ Dr. Dharman, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm there. Okay. Mm. Dr. Dharman, I went to the first visit to the Sheikh Abu Hassan Arif Halawi, who is one of the famous Arif or the Arif. And I know very well سكرتيره أي مساعده الخاص وكان صديق صديق لي حميم واسم هذا المساعد الشيخ غسان فياض وصلنا إلى هناك فاستقبلنا الشيخ غسان فياض وشرحت له أن 
هذا دكتور هارمندرا دوبي من كبار أطباء الأيورفيدا في الهند فقال ما أن أتينا على ذكر الهند فقال أهلا ومرحا وألف سهلا بأشقائنا الموحدين في الهند ونحن نسر دوما باستقمالهم في لبنان وهنا بالذات في مقر الشيخ أبو حسن عارف حلاوي وقلت له شيخ مروان نحن جئنا كي نزور ونأخذ بركة الشيخ أبو حسن وقال أهلا بكم وستروه عندها عنا على الدكتور دهرمندرا أن يطرح سؤالا وكنت أنا المترجم بينهما قال لي اسأله إذا كنت أستطيع أن أقرأ أن أجس نبض الشيخ يعني بمعنى أن يأخذ نبضه ويعرف ما فيه فسألني الشيخ مروان ولماذا؟ قلت أن الدكتور هارمندرا دوبي متخصص في قراءة النبض وهو يستطيع أن يروي لك ما يحدث لك وكل ما تعاني من أمراض أو مشاكل بمجرد أن يجس نبضك وهو انطلاقا من ذلك ومن باب البركة يحب أن يقرأ نبض الشيخ أطرق الشيخ مروان قليلا وقال سنجرب إذا نجح في الامتحان هكذا قال لي فندعه يقرأ نبض الشيخ وإذا لم ينجح فهذا أمر آخر قلت له ما هو الامتحان الذي تطلب أن تريد أن تجريه عليه قال فليقرأ نبضي وإذا صح ما يقول عندها يستطيع أن يقرأ نبض الشيخ قلت فأخبرت الدكتور دهان مدرى قال هذا أمر بسيط جدا ليعطني يده وأنا أقول له كل ما يعاني منه وأعطيه رابور يعني أعطيه تقرير كامل عن صحته أخذ يد الشيخ وأذكر تماما أنه قال له كل ما يعاني منه فقال له أنت تعاني من مشكلة في المصران الغليظ وحددها له بالاسم وبالتحديد دهش الشيخ مروان دهشة عظيمة قال أيمكن من النبض أن يحدد كل هذه الأمور وما أعاني حتى البارحة وبهذه الدقة وبرضه أراد أن يستحنف امتحانه فقال ليقرأ أيضا نبض زميلي الآخر وسنرى عندها فجاء زميله الشيخ الآخر وقرأ له نبضه وأعطاه تقريرا كاملا عن وضعه الصحي بالتفصيل الدقيق كذلك دهج هذا الشيخ الآخر وأسقط من يدهما وقال لا مفر إذا سنأتي بالشيخ أبو حسن عارف حلاوي وليقرأ له وليجس نبضه طالما أنه من كبار العلماء والعارفين جاء بالشيخ أبو حسن عارف حلاوي وكان في أواخر أيامه أتحدث كان ذلك صيف 2002 جاء به على عربة على عربة يعني النقالة وكان مشهدا مهيبا جدا أذكر أن عيناي دمعتا أنا والدكتور هرمندرا دوبي عندما رأينا هذا الشيخ الجليل آتيا وهو على كرسي متحرك وهذا ما يسمونه في ال... عند ال... في الهند دارشان أي نظرة المعلم انحنينا احتراما وحاول الدكتور أخذ يده ليقبلها دكتور دهرمندرا يد الشيخ فأبى الشيخ إلا أن يقبل يد الدكتور دهرمندرا ويبدو أنها ه... أن هذا كان تقليدا عند الشيخ أبو حسن عارف حلاوي لا يدع أحدا يقبل يده إلا ويقبل يده هو بالمقابل ثم أخذ الدكتور دهرمندرا يد الشيخ وأذكر تماما ما قاله لي قال ما قرأت نبضا مماثلا إلا لنبض حبيس وناسك في الهيمالايا وهذا هذا دليل على سمو معرفة الشيخ وعلو مقامه في الولاية والقداسة 
وخبر آخر أذكره عن أيضا حذق الدكتور دهارمندرا في قراءة النبض في منطقة نفسها في الباروق ذهبنا مرة استدعونا وكانت هناك فتاة في الخامسة والعشرين على ما أذكر وتعاني من مرض وأهلها لا يعرفون من أي مرض تعاني هي وكانت في الفراش دخلت وأصرت أن لا يكون معنا أحد يعني كنت أنا كمترجم ومساعد للدكتور دهارمندرا والدكتور دهارمندرا وهي أمسك نبضها وقال لها ببساطة وترجمت لها أنت لا تعانين من شيء كنت حبلى وأسقطت الجنين منذ أسبوع فقط لا غير وهذا ما يعني ما يسمى بالعربي مروحة وهي فتاة وليست متزوجة فجن جنون هذه الفتاة وخافت أن تنفض أن تنفضح أمام أهلها فقلت لها لا عليك لن نخبر أحدا ولكن س نرتب هذا الأمر بطريقة لا تكون فضيحة لك لأننا لا نعرف ماذا ينتظرها لو عرف أهلها بنتيجة هذا التشخيص إذا ببساطة كلية عرف تحديدا مما تعاني هذه الفتاة فضحت وهذا ما أقوله في كتاب عن الدكتور دهارمندرا دوبي مع الدكتور دوبي نبضك يفضحك لا تستطيع أن تخفي شيئا عنه يعرف كل شيء أذكر مثلا عندما جاءتنا وكان في منزلي امرأة أخرى وكانت تضع حجابا فأمسك بيدها وقرأ نبضها وقال هذا ليس حجاب ما تضعينه أنت تضعي مجرد نوع من إشارة لتخفي لأن لا شعر عندك وأنت مصابة بالسرطان وقد سقط تساقط كل شعرك بسبب العلاج الكيميائي فأجهشت بالبكاء وخلعت هذا ما تضعه على رأسها وبان وبانت أنها أن لا شعر لها بسبب العلاج قصة قصة ثالثة أرويها وهذا مؤخرا حصلت في زيارة الأخيرة للهند في عيادته رأيت صديقة قديمة لي كنت أنا أرشدتها إليه فسألتها كيف حالك وما هو وكيف رأيك بالدكتور دهارمندرا فأخبرتني قالت اكتشف الدكتور دهارمندرا عندي حساسية ضد البتنجان يعني أنني أصاب بحساسية ما أن آكل البتنجان وحذرني من هذا الأمر مرارا وفي الأسبوع السابق جئته فأخذ يدي وجس نبضي وقال لي ببساطة أما حذرتك من أكل البتنجان لما أكلته البارحة أي أنه عرف بكل بساطة أنها أكلت البتنجان منذ يوم وأنبه على ذلك وقالت لي أنظر لم أستطع أن أخفي عنه أنني أكلت مرة البتنجان فضحني نبضي والقصة الأخيرة التي أرويها هي ما حصل لي شخصيا أيضا منذ عام عندما كنت في الهند ومما نصحني أو قاله لي أنت في فترة صعبة وفي هذه الفترة ظهرك يؤلمك وكان هذا صحيح وقال أحذرك من أن تحمل أي حمل يزيد عن خمسة كيلوغرامات وبعد أسبوع جئته إلى العيادة فأخذ نبضي وقال لي أما حذرتك منذ أسبوع أن لا تحمل ما يزيد عن خمس كيلوغرامات لما حملت البارحة حملا يزيد عن ذلك دهشت وكنت بالفعل قلت له كنت في سوق الخضار واضطررت أن أحمل من إلى الفندق ولم أجد من يساعدني فاضطررت أن أحمل مجموعة من الخضار كانت عشرة كيلو عرف أنني قمت بذلك بمجرد أن جس نبضي It is enough to explain I already tell our people some of your accounts about your pulse reading 
Dr. Dharmendra, first, uh, you are welcome with us. And the first question is an evident question. How you know all these diseases just by touching the pulse of your patient? See, pulse reading is a science. First, we should understand pulse reading is nothing, but it's a science. It's a science. It's a 5,000 year old science. You must have heard uh, about Ramayana. In Ramayana, there was a Ravan. Hmm. Ravan has written a book on pulse reading. That's called Ravan Sahita. Hmm. Ravan Sahita. Hmm. In Ravan Sahita, he has written many things about pulse reading. So he was the first pulse reader. Ravana was a great Vaidya, means great doctor and master of pulse uh, reading. So pulse reading is a science and the only thing is that you have to practice as much as you practice that much, that much you develop your intuition. So pulse reading, the base of the pulse reading is on three things, vat, pit, and cuff. But you are uh, much more than this. You know even uh, what each and every disease from how? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vat, pit, and cuff. So vat is divided in 80 diseases, pit is divided in 40 diseases, kapha is divided in 20 diseases. Then these diseases have sub-diseases, hmm. sub-diseases. So it's a big thing. But for the basic knowledge, I'm just talking about the basic knowledge because if you go in deeper things no one will understand mm. so we will just go on the basic things so what in pulse reading when you see the pulse you have to put three fingers mm. from your wrist joint the first pulse what you see first one mm. is vata okay second is pitta third one is kapha mm. so what do you see in the pulse, first of all, the temperature of the pulse. Mm. Then you see the movement of the pulse, how fast it is moving. Mm. Then you see the strength of the pulse. Mm. Is the pulse is strong or light? Okay. Then you see the heaviness of the pulse. Mm. Like this, there are so many things in the pulse. Yeah. So many things. Okay. So many things. Let us talk but, a little bit. Okay. You want to... Uh... Explain yeah. more. So if you, if you, I will give you one example. I will yeah. give you an example. Mm. Suppose one patient is anemic. Anemic means Enema. his or her. Mm. No, anemic, his or her hemoglobin is less. Yeah. Hemoglobin is less. Okay. So when you see that person pulse, mm. just hold the pulse and take the wrist or hand upwards, mm. you will feel that blood is coming down mm. Mm. like like you know uh, like uh, if you have a pipe and uh, half is filled with water mm. and half is empty mm. and if you just lift the pipe you feel everything is coming down mm. same thing you will feel in anemia i'm just giving you an example mm. or someone is having parasites yeah parasites or worms mm. The pulse is too fast. Okay. Then if someone is having temperature, like fever, mm. the pulse is fast, mm. very fast. Mm. He's tired, lethargic. So you know by the pulse itself, or you can tell him you are going to get fever. Mm -hmm. If you see diabetes pulse, diabetes pulse, the third pulse, which we call kapha, yeah. the kapha pulse will beat heavily. Mm. That means that person is having diabetes. Okay. So there are so many things in the pulse, but you have to practice every day okay. and just you will know it. But you have to practice. There are basic things. Basic things are written in the text. Dr. Basic Harvey, things are written. Let us talk a little bit on Ayurveda itself. What are mm. the advantages of Ayurveda comparatively with modern and allopathic medicine? Very good, very good. This is what the whole world is asking nowadays. Mm. See, like for take example, in allopathy, we 
work on symptoms hmm. like suppose you are having headache okay and if you go to an allopathic doctor and tell him i am having headache hmm. he will give you painkiller for headache hmm. simple hmm. ayurveda this is not the case hmm. ayurveda the doctor will see your pulse why he is having headache hmm. what is the reason behind the headache hmm. what is the root cause behind the headache see understand hmm. what yes. is the what is the root cause behind the headache hmm. so by pulse reading by asking certain questions hmm. asking about his diet asking about his lifestyle hmm. the ayurvedic doctor finds out the root case root hmm. cause hmm. of his headache okay and that's how he gives the regimen suppose the headache is due to acidity hmm. just by acid traveling upwards and he is having a headache or due to gases hmm. or due to stress hmm. i will tell you a simple example like a few days before i had a patient of blood pressure hmm. hypertension what you call hypertension of blood pressure hmm. and young boy you know must be 24 years okay. of his age he came with blood pressure hmm. so he told doctor i am having very high blood pressure and all those things so i said okay and he was taking blood pressure medication hmm. so when we checked his pulse we found his pitta has increased pitta means acid level or heat level in his body has increased hmm. so what we did is just reduce his pitta by giving herbal supplement diet and you will not believe he doesn't need to take blood pressure medication hmm. completely went away because it was not real blood pressure it was due to acid his pressure shooted up and we just worked on his acid level and his blood pressure vanished otherwise that boy have to take blood pressure medication lifelong uh -huh. so this is a difference ayurveda works on the root cause and allopathic treatment works on the symptoms okay. or symptomatic hmm. uh, doctor doctor dharmendra uh, what ayurveda can suggest as a daily routine for someone is doing yoga and meditation see yoga meditation and ayurveda are brothers and sisters hmm. it's a brothers and sisters it all come from veda yeah you know the both the things the mother is the same for every meditator or every yoga or yogi i will tell yogi who is interested in doing yoga very seriously it's a yogi hmm. first of all thing he has to detoxify his body remember one thing detoxify his body yeah. i believe unless and until you detoxify your body properly your meditation your yoga will not go on that level you will go on certain level but not that level mm. so detoxification is very important mm. for the yogis or meditators like for take example you know you have lots of anxiety nervousness and you are doing meditation mm. your anxiety will disturb your meditation yeah so get rid of that anxiety now that anxiety must be anything it must be your domestic problem it must be your financial problem it must be x y z mm. so first of all you have to get rid of all this problem and very important thing is physical problem your physical problem suppose you have a back pain and you are doing meditation how can you do meditation okay your mind will go on your back so meditation will not be proper if you have a digestion problem and you are doing meditation hmm. it will not work properly so in himalayas in himalayas our guru is sitting there yeah. he must be knowing it in himalayas every yogis there is certain plant a herbs in himalayas hmm. the name is kutaj hmm. kutaj okay. there is a plant called kutaj hmm. so every yogi takes that kutaj for 2 3 days hmm. the body get detoxified they get loose motions hmm. diarrhea and all the toxins comes out they are completely free okay 
they are completely free from the problem mm -hmm. because they have detoxified so in himalayas all the uh, real yogis they know how to detoxify themselves so i am just giving the name the kutach mm -hmm. they go on the mountains they collect that herbs they take it you know the proper dose then two or three days they get diarrhea or the toxins comes out from their body and during that process they take ghee yeah cow's ghee mm -hmm. you know for two three yeah. days they take cow's ghee and after that they take kutach yeah it's like it, it's like panchakarma we say yeah. virechan treatment mm -hmm. it's like virechan treatment okay and then they go for meditation or and all those process so detoxification is very important for yogis and for the person who wants to go high level of meditation unless and until he is detoxified he will i don't know but i believe he will not achieve that level okay i will translate if for a few because they are asking me to uh, give some translation so please 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 translate please translate utarjimu walakin bi ikhtisar shadid wa huna azkuru annana سنرسل إليكم جميعا رابطا بعد يومين تجدون فيه كامل هذه المقابلة مترجمة إلى اللغة العربية السؤال الأول كان عن قراءة النبض وكيف يستطيع أن يشخص كل هذه الأمراض من خلال مجرد جس نبض المريض الجواب كان طويلا ولكن خلاصته أن قراءة النبض هي علم وعلم عميق ودقيق جدا هناك ثلاثة كاتيجوري ثلاثة أقسام للنبض هو المزاج الهوائي والمزاج الناري والمزاج الترابي المزاج الهوائي نقسمه إلى ثمانين مرضا والمزاج الناري أربعين مرضا والمزاج الترابي عشرين مرضا ومن خلال هذه التقسيمات ندخل إلى الأمراض ونحددها بدقة مرضا إثر مرض باختصار جديد السؤال الثاني كان ما الفرق وما ميزات الأيورفيدا بمقارنة بالطب الحديث والطب الألوباتيك التعارضي والجواب كان أن الفرق أن الطب الحديث هو ألوباتيك أي طب عوارضي يستند إلى العوارض ومن خلال العوارض يحددها ويحاول أن يعالجها في حين أن الأيورفيدا تذهب إلى أعمق من ذلك بكثير تريد وتسعى أن تعرف جذر وسبب هذا المرض وتعالج السبب ليس فقط تعالج العوارض عوارض المرض السؤال الثالث كان ماذا تنصح لمن يمارس اليوغا والتأمل كروتين يومي والجواب أن الأساس في اليوغا والأساس في الصحة هي الديتوكسيفيكيشن أي طرد الزموم من الجسم وهذا ما تسعى وتعمل إليه الأيورفيدا الأيورفيدا واليوغا والتأمل قال هما شقيقات ومن عائلة واحدة الأيورفيدا تساعد اليوغا واليوغا تساعد الأيورفيدا واليوغيون يعرفون بتقليدهم القديم مبادئ وأهمية إزالة وطرد السموم من الجسم ويعرفون حتى الأعشاب التي تساعد أو هي أساسية لطرد السموم من الجسم دكتور هرمان I talked about uh, routine for yoga and general routine. Is there some special daily routine to prevent common diseases like diabetes, blood pressure, cancer, etc. in Ayurveda? Yeah, yeah, there are many things. See, first of all, what Ayurveda says, whatever the disease you get, basically the reason are only two. That is your diet and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Remember, two important things, your diet and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. What are you eating and how are you living? Mm -hmm. Your diet depends, you know, like nowadays people are eating junk food, pizza, burger and all those stuff. So you will get some or other problems. Mm -hmm. Lifestyle, you don't sleep on proper time, you don't exercise, you don't do yoga. 
Mm. You have lots of stress, you know, lots of stress. And so you get the diseases. So you have to keep a balance in your ahar, means your diet and your lifestyle. Mm. So if you control your diet and lifestyle, uh, you avoid 50% of the diseases. Mm -hmm. Then there are other things what you call as uh, herbal remedies and home remedies. Mm -hmm. Now home remedies, uh, if you properly follow, uh, that helps to increase your immune system. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have mentioned like cancer and all those things, these are all related to your immune system. Mm -hmm. So if you improve your immune system, mm -hmm. most of your problem will go away. So Ayurveda believes to improve your immune system. So proper diet means, for example, having everyday almonds in the morning, mm -hmm. four to five almonds, mm -hmm. uh, two dates, you know, uh, take in the morning, mm -hmm. then have herbal tea made up of, uh, I don't know what you call in Lebanon for Tulsi. Yes, uh, yes. It's called, yeah, it's called, yeah, it's called holy basil. Mm -hmm. Holy, holy basil. If you make a herbal tea of holy basil mm. and add little cinnamon in that and drink first thing in the morning, okay. so that increases your immune system. Then uh, try to have uh, half cooked food, mm. you know, like leafy half. vegetables, fruits, fruits. You know, mm. like cooking too much kills the nutrition value of the food. Mm. So try to have half cooked food. Mm -hmm. So this is all your diet and have proper diet, mm -hmm. have proper diet, you know, don't skip your meals, have uh, proper time, then do regular exercise, do yoga, do walking, you know, so this will all help you to maintain your health and do certain home remedies. Then there are certain herbal remedies which helps to improve your immune system. Okay. So there is one herb called Giloy. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have given you. We'll talk. On it. Yeah, yeah. Giloy, we'll Ashwagandha, Shatta. And then we'll talk in details on uh, Corona and yeah. how to prevent so, it and to cure it. So important, important thing is focus on your diet and focus on your lifestyle. Okay. Yaqul, the question is, what do you say about Ayurveda? Routine daily for all people to avoid the diseases and to avoid them. يقو والجواب أن حسب الأيورفيدا هناك سببين سببان أساسيان للمرض هي طريقة الحياة والتغذية طريقة الحياة بمعنى مواقيت النوم والأكل والطعام وغيرها وأيضا التغذية الأيورفيدا تسعى دوما وأساسا إلى تقوية جهاز المناعة في الجسم وهي تسعى إلى تقويته من خلال أغذية معينة بسموها أي الأدوية البيتية وهو ما يقوله أحد أطباء الأيروفيدا الأيروفيدا ليكن دواءك الغذاء وليكن غذاءك الدواء عندما نتناول نصحة بالعديد سوف نتلوها ونحددها لكم على الإنترنت ونعطيكم الرابط بعض النصائح مثل الحبق مثلا أن يأخذ الإنسان كل يوم ست أو سبع حبات من اللوز أيضا التمر وغيرها بالإضافة إلى التمارين اليوغية بصورة منتظمة دكتور هرمندا We start our main topic today كورونا From the beginning of the pandemic this pandemic you treated more than 1,005 100 patients of COVID-19. Do you felt scared to get yourself this virus? How and how you took your precautions? Our first. Yeah. Uh, honestly speaking, I was scared a little bit because the uh, social media has created. So one, at least to uh, meet 1,500. Uh, it's it's very less. There are other doctors. They have seen more than me, mm. so it is very less. It's not like if you consider the population of India. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have seen uh, nothing. In Lebanon, if the doctor has say uh, has see uh, ten or fifteen, he he feels scared. Maybe I get. No, 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 nothing. There is nothing. Social media has created. 
a big uh, problem uh, like corona is this corona is that corona will kill and x y z whatever it is but in reality it is not like that if you take proper precaution and uh, control your immune system nothing is going to affect you like you will not believe luis in my clinic hmm. i had tested people and like we had uh, technicians who do uh, testing hmm. in my they are sitting in front of me i am doing their pulse reading and i have asked them to test for corona because they were having the symptoms hmm. as soon as i saw their pulse their pulse were fast hmm. means they were having fever they were having cough they were having cold hmm. so in, in the pulse it comes that there is something wrong hmm. because it's a new thing it's a little new than regular problem yeah so i used to ask them to check it and next day in their investigation report hmm. they were positive oh. hmm. you know but you i was not virus? no how but, uh, how means we were taking precaution precaution means what i was honestly speaking because you have seen i have a big family member yeah in my house you know so many people are staying mm. we are staying in one house mm. there are kids there are small children mm. in my house everyone were afraid that he is going in the clinic he is seeing patients he is seeing corona patients mm. if he comes back home and he can bring that virus with him Mm. and everyone can get affected mm. everyone can get affected yeah there was a fear mm. there was a fear all over the world not only in india all over the world there was a big fear mm. but honestly speaking louis i did few things mm. which helped me my family my like friends what? and my patients i will tell you like what first thing in the morning what we used to do we used to gargle hmm. gargle with oil yes. now it depends what oil you get in your country it's not yeah, necessary oil in, in our yeah, see i i have seen i have seen you get the best quality of olive oil in lebanon best quality 2 hmm. teaspoon olive oil hmm. just warm it little bit just warm it with with water not with water or with not water mm. if it is with you can have it water also yeah or just warm it yeah and just put it in your mouth and just move around move around your mouth mm. just gargle it mm, just gargle it and just spit it out yeah first thing first thing because i am seeing patients every day mm. and i don't know which type of patients are coming to me mm. i don't know mm. they must be corona they must be no corona god knows mm. they are carrier they are not carrier they are suffering from corona mm. i don't know mm. so i have to be completely strong yeah. so first thing in the morning what i have to do gargling with oil mm. you can do with olive oil i used to do with sesame oil okay first thing mm. second thing what i used to do turmeric and yeah. salt turmeric and salt mm. i used to put in a glass of warm water and i used to gargle it this was the second step yeah second step mm. third step i used to drink herbal tea mm. i used to drink herbal tea and the herbal tea was made up of tan basil leaves mm. tan basil leaves mm. one stick of cinnamon yeah one stick of cinnamon mm. two or three black pepper Mm. quarter teaspoon of ginger powder mm. boil it in glass of water it must be 200 ml or 300 ml of water mm. and make it 100 ml mm. and first thing was i used to drink that okay it first thing in the morning prevent it is enough to it is more than enough what it does it clears your lungs mm. it clears your lungs it warms your body it improves your digestion mm. it improves your digestion it improves all the channels in the body improves all the channels in the body mm. then in my diet i used to have fruits mm. regularly fruits 
Hmm. You know, like yeah. for except fruits, like vitamin C was very important. So hmm. I have to have oranges, hmm. apple, you know, uh, grapes, then uh, lemon water, pomegranate, hmm. papaya. This was my first diet. Okay. In fruits. Then your regular meals, you know, whatever you eat, regular food, hmm. in Indian food. Hmm. But this was the first thing I was doing it. Hmm. Then when I used to come back from my clinic, like I come, I like seeing all the patients. After seeing all the patients, I used to come back at home. Hmm. First thing what I was doing was taking steam inhalation. Yeah. Of what? Steam, which? Uh, I, what I used to do, I used to sometimes I used to take normal steam, yeah, normal steam, hmm. sometimes eucalyptus oil, eucalyptus oil. Eucalyptus I used to put camphor uh, inside, I think. You, you can put camphor, you can put eucalyptus oil, hmm. you know, uh, you can even put ajwain, ajwain, uh, what you call in Lebanon, I don't know. Okay, we'll see, yeah. you'll see, ajwain, hmm. used to put that. So, and we used to take the steam. Mm, mm. Steam was very important. Steam helps 90%. Okay. But after seeing the patient, first thing I was doing was taking steam inhalation. Okay. And another thing I would take in my clinic, what I used to do, mm. I used to burn camphor. Okay. I used to burn camphor. As soon as I noticed, that this patient is having corona. I used to immediately ask my assistant yeah. to burn camphor mm -hmm. in my clinic. Okay. You know? So mm -hmm. just burning camphor and the smell in the clinic changes. And believe me, the, all the viruses mostly get killed. Mostly. I can say 100%, but mostly get killed. Uh, so and, and, yeah? يا ساترجم ما قاله باختصار لاننا سنرسل ايضا سنضع على الموقع هذه النصائح السؤال كان انت عاينت وداويت اكثر من 1500 مريض بالكورونا كيف حميت نفسك وما هي الوسائل التي اتخذتها كي تتوقف تتقي هذا المرض والجواب بعده بنود اولا الغرغره يقول الغرغره بالزيت يسخن الزيت اما ماء قليل من المياه او بدون ماء يسخن قليلا ويغرغر الانسان زيت زيتون في لبنان اضبط شيء زيت زيتون وايضا الغرغره الثانيه هي للعقده الصفراء الكركم يعني يضع في كوب من الماء الفاتر ملعقه من العقده الصفراء ويغرغر بها مع مع ربع ملعقه من الملح الخشن تحدث ايضا عن شاي يوغيتي الشاي وفيه حبق مجموعه من الاشياء سنذكرها سنضعها بالتفصيل لانه كتبها لنا وسنضعها بالتفصيل على الموقع ونرسل اليكم الرابط أما يقول في العودة مساء فالطريقة الأساسية للوقاية هي البخار يعني تنشق البخار مع الأوكاليبتوس أو مع الكافور وفي العيادة طريقته الأساسية للوقاية, للوقاية كانت بحرق القافور في العيادة وهذا ما لاحظته دوما حتى في سيارته عندما كنت معه وصعدت في سيارته مرارا فهو يحرق الكافور باستمرار في السياره وهي طريقه للوقايه من الجراثيم ومن الفيروسات. دكتور دارمندا is there some daily routine in case when we got this virus presently when we have yeah 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 there are in Ayurveda, see in allopathy, there are four or five regimens or medicines. First of all, uh, I will tell you in allopathy, like there is a fever, so they gave you paracetamol, 650 milligram. Mm. 
antiviral drug called febiflu or remdesivir if your lungs are affected they give you steroid called prednisolone 4 mg or 8 mg depends on your problem then they give you one antibiotics called doxycycline 100 mg 200 mg depends on your problem then they give you vitamin b b12 b complex or vitamin c this is the ideal medicine in allopathic and uh, if needed they give you oxygen you know externally they give you oxygen in ayurveda there are very beautiful herbs you know like uh, tribhuvan kirti ras shwas kuthar shwas ka chintamani giloi ashwagandha shatavari chavan prash these are the names of the herbs if the patients are taking it regularly uh, they like instead of 14 days 15 days problem they get treated in 7 days the result is faster hmm. result is faster in india the ayush ministry ayush yeah. ministry yeah what i'm saying is the guidelines given by the ayush ministry yeah first time first time in india we have seen that in this pandemic they have used allopathic and ayurvedic together yeah both first time in the history of india mm. even though ayurveda originated in india mm. but this is the first time the ministry they advised people to have ayurveda and believe me mm. because of ayurveda because of ayurveda such a densely populated country mm. such a densely populated country you will not believe mm. has been saved has been saved just because of ayurveda okay because there are not that much chemicals or medicine chemicals means medicine yeah available in india mm. that they can treat everyone mm. so because of this herbal tea because of this home remedy yeah. the people at home at home itself they have been treated and cured okay. because there is not that much facility to admit everyone in hospital mm. and if you compare the rate of death in india i will say it's very less yeah very less than other part of the world mm. like if you see what is the position of india okay so it's all because of ayurveda the people in india have been saved okay dr dharmendra the main problem and all people are asking about vaccine first question yeah did you take vaccine or if you didn't yet take it you want to take it see i have not taken vaccine personally i have not taken Why? vaccine during the time of corona when there was a big problem that people were getting infected mm. that time i have not get infected mm. now the things have changed mm. now the things have changed people are much better virus has reduced mm. virus has reduced mm. i don't think so i need vaccine and no, you your family not members be, they, they not a single fam- not a single family member has taken vaccine and they are not interested also mm. they are not interested also mm. even though i have i am not against vaccine believe me i am not against vaccine this is a protocol you in india patient to to take or do not take so i patient they call me mm. they ask me can i take vaccine i don't say no if you want you can take it mm. it depends what they are doing mm. it depends what they are doing they are health workers mm. they are traveling you know no they are traveling they are uh, means uh, they are indulging with people more and more yeah. it depends on their work mm. i don't say no mm. i don't say no if you want you can take it because in india the vaccines what they have they are using it what i am seeing it mm. i have seen many of my patients and many of my friends mm. they have taken second dose of vaccine yeah like first dose then second dose second dose is after a month yeah no problem no problem at all mm. but the efficacy efficacy of the vaccine is 90% not 100% mm. 
only 90 percent hmm. but it's a pandemic in pandemic it's very difficult to say people not to take vaccine hmm. if you want you can take vaccine if you can take care of yourself you don't need it hmm. but so i can't I say you mean you are taking care of yourself and you don't need you for yourself you need not for your family members a vaccine see my family members no one is interested mm -hmm. no one is interested mm. about what that's what i'm saying i'm not against vaccine yeah but my family member is not interested mm. and you will believe me i was born in banaras yeah i have been not been vaccinated for anything not for bcg for polio hepatitis nothing i am vaccinated you will find not a single mark in my body hmm i don't have any problem okay if you can take care you will not believe me luis i was uh, we used to have a clinic in washington dc hmm in america washington dc hmm that was a place in washington dc the hospital was very famous for add adhd hyperactive children mm. you know children who are very hyperactive yeah. yeah add attention deficit disorder so from all over europe and all over america the children used to come in this hospital in washington dc in america mm. so we used to have a small clinic near the hospital mm. not the treatment what the children used to get Hmm. was anti depressant medicine anti anxiety medicine hmm. those medicines were given to adults means young people of 50 years old people and same type of medicine or the dosage of the medicine were given to the kids hmm. who were 3 years old 7 years old 8 years old hmm. now the parents of these children hmm. they knew what these medicines are so they don't want to give this kind of medicines mm. so this kids used to come to our clinic mm. and when we used to take the history mm. when we used to take the history mm. why this kids got add adhd mm. or hyperactive mm. 50% of the children were affected due to vaccines mm. because of the vaccines they got this problem hmm. otherwise they were before uh, they were better hmm. so uh, you should Dharmendra. be very smart before taking the vaccine if yeah. you get proper vaccine you can take it uh, if you can take care of yourself you don't need it so the question is evident uh, in this case how to improve immune system to pro to prevent corona see corona will not go from the world first thing hmm. vaccines have 90% of the efficacy 90% of the efficacy but 10% there is always a chance hmm. of getting Il est disconnecté. Euh, Jacques, tu m'entends? Oui, je t'entends. Voilà, donc il a. Euh, ben... oui, il est revenu. Oui. Ok. D'accord, donc. Ask to unmute. Oui, je lui demande la réactivation du micro, s'il peut. C'est peut-être une coupure de réseau. Ouais. Ok. Ok. So, 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 yeah it's very important to always to take care of yourself yeah. by home remedies or herbal supplements mm. so whatever it happens mm. see forget about corona Lu dr luis you forget about corona there are so many other diseases which are coming on this planet on this planet mm. so you have to always take care of your immune system now this corona will go ebola will come the mad cow disease will come then there are so many other viruses you don't know hmm. you don't know so it's always better to take care of your immune system always better hmm. Hmm. okay so, uh, 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 so, uh
السؤال كان حول اللقاح والجواب سألته هل أخذ اللقاح أو ينوي أخذه قال ببساطة أنا لم أخذ اللقاح ولا أنوي أن أخذه ولكنني عندما يطرح علي مرضاي السؤال أقول لهم ببساطة يمكنكم أن تتلقحوا ولست ضد لقاح الكورونا بتاتا لأنها جائحة كبيرة ولا نستطيع أن نقول ذلك أما بالنسبة لي شخصيا يقول فمنذ بداية الكورونا وكان كانت الخطورة كبيرة ولم أصب بهذا المرض لأن الوسائل الوقاية الأيورفيدية كانت فعالة فإذا كان عندما كان المرض خطيرا لدرجة لم أصب به فلماذا أخذ اللقاح الآن ودرجة الخطورة قد تدنى المهم وهو رهان الكورونا رهان عفوا الأيورفيدا دائما أن نقوي جهاز المناعة وإذا قوينا جهاز المناعة أنا لا أحتاج إلى هذا اللقاح بالرغم من أنني معرض لهذا الفيروس ولا أهل منزلي وهم في البيت أكثر من عشرة يحتاجون إلى هذا اللقاح دكتور دوبي How to face fear of corona According Very important question Very important question If you want to get rid of the fear of the corona you have to do yoga and meditation and exercise These are the three very important things Yoga, meditation and exercise First do exercise Do walking, walking, brisk walking, fast, fast walking. After fast walking, do little stretching and then do yoga. After doing yoga, your body get tired. Your body get tired. It wants to go in rest. Just go in meditation. Your meditation will also improve. If you see yogis in Himalayas, They travel all the way in the mountains. Mm. They walk in the mountains. As soon as they walk in the mountains, they go and find the cave. Mm. They go and find the cave. As soon as they find the cave, they go and sit inside and they just meditate. Because they are tired of walking. And as soon as they sit, they go in meditation. Mm. So these are three important يمكن أن الاتصال انقطع دكتور هرمندرا سأختصر ما قاله السؤال كان كيف يمكننا أن نواجه الخوف من الكورونا والجواب كان كي نواجه الخوف اليوغا التمارين الجسدية كالمشي السريع وغيرها وأيضا التأمل دكتور هرمندرا أوكي okay. it is good because I was translating your uh, your answer yeah so uh-huh. you can continue see so important thing is these three things yoga meditation and exercise then your diet then your diet mm. try to eat warm food mm-hmm. try to eat warm food Avoid food from your fridge, okay. your refrigerator. Hmm. You know, avoid. And avoid food. Like, you know, night food you are taking next day in the morning. Yeah. That is very wrong. Hmm. Try to have fresh food. Mm-hmm. Fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, and cook food. Okay. Cook food okay. is very important. Hmm. I have seen many people, you know, they cook their food, put it in a fridge, And they eat next day, they eat after two days, very wrong. Avoid all those things. Okay. Have, have seasonal fruits. Whatever is available in season, have those fruits. Have fresh. Mm. See, in Ayurveda, they say if you eat food which is like leftover, like night food you are taking next day in the morning, mm. it increases ama, mucus. Mm in your body mm. that disturbs your digestion okay. you get gases acidity and same things travels all over your body mm. and you feel lethargic tired anxious mentally disturbed mm. 
So try to have fresh. Fresh. Okay. Al Qita min jadid. Are Are you with us? سأختصر ما قاله يقول بعد هذه الأمور الثلاثة وهي اليوغا التمارين الجسدية والتأمل هناك أيضا التغذية والنصيحة الأولى في التغذية تناول الطعام الطازج لا الأيرفيدا هي ضد أن نحضر الطعام لنأكله في اليوم التالي أو أن نحفظه في البر في البراد ثم نأكل نأكله ولا لي لم وليس طازجا إذا لابد من استخدام الطعام الطازج وتحدث أيضا عن الأكل الساخن لا تأكلوا مأكولات مثلجة مأكولات باردة داوموا على تناول الطعام الساخن المطهو الساخن السخن جيدا ننتظره علّه يأتي با on l'a perdu peut-être وفي هذا الوقت أقول أيضا نصائحه بالنسبة لمواجهة خوف الكورونا وهي أكثر تعقيد وهو أكثر تعقيد من الكورونا نفسها يقول عليكم أن تتجنبوا دكتور دارمندرا نيجاتيف سوتس يعني الأفكار السلبية ثانيا ما هو خطر هاف نوليدج اي المعرفة المجتزأة وثالثا رونج ببليسيتي اي الدعاية الخاطئة ثلاثة امور عليكم تجنبها لانها هي ما يفاقم هذا الزعر من الكورونا دكتور دارمندرا بليز يور ميكرو ار يو هيرينج مي يا يا ام هيرينج دكتور اوكي اوكي My question uh, next, do you think that Ayurveda, Ayurvedic treatments are enough to face Corona as prevention and as treatment for it? See, prevention, I'm sure. Prevention, I'm sure. If you do proper uh, regiments, mm -hmm. which has been told in Ayurveda, of course, you can avoid Corona. Mm -hmm. But once you get Corona, once you get Corona, then the situation is different thing. You have to uh, work or you have to take help mm. of both the pathy. Mm. In certain hospitals in India, mm. they have completely treated corona patients with the help of Ayurveda itself. Mm -hmm. Completely. No allopathic medicine, single allopathic medicine. They have not given single allopathic medicine. Mm. Complete Ayurvedic medicine and patients have recovered and they are 100% better. Mm. But in certain cases, certain cases, mm. they have used both the things. They have used Ayurveda as well as allopathy. Mm. So you have, see, both the pathies are going to help you. Mm. Like if, if there is like um, uh, the lungs have been affected very badly mm. due to virus, mm. you need oxygen. Yeah. You need oxygen. You have to take care of the oxygen. Mm. Then you have to give antibiotics. Mm. In certain cases, you have to give higher antibiotics. Mm. So in certain cases, certain cases, not in every cases, in certain cases, you have to take help of allopathy as well as Ayurveda. Mm. But in India, 50% in Ayurvedic hospitals, they have treated uh, corona patient with complete success rate, complete success rate with Ayurveda itself. And in allopathic hospitals, they were giving herbal tea to every patient. They were giving chavan prash. In allopathic hospital, mm. they were giving giloi, giloi mm. as a medicine okay. to every patient. So they were taking help of both the things. Translate in brief. A question. Okay. 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 اولا الوقايه من الكورونا وثانيا لعلاج الكورونا في حال اصيب المرء بهذا الفيروس والجواب قال للوقايه استطيع ان اؤكد 100% ان الايورفيدا كافيه وشافيه للوقايه من هذا المرض وهذا ما يفعله هو اي انه كل وقايته 
من الكورونا رغم تعرضه لألوف الإصابات بالكورونا من من المرضى يكتفي بوسائل الأيورفيدا للوقاية أما بالنسبة إلى العلاج فقال لا بد من تضافر جهود الطب الأيورفيدا والطب الحديث لعلاج لعلاج الكورونا خاصة في حالات النقص في الأكسجين ولكن في أكثر المستشفيات في الهند استخدموا كلا العلاجين أي علاج الأيورفيدا وفي الوقت عينه مع علاج الطب الحديث وأثبت هذا المزيج من العلاجين فعاليته في مواجهة هذا المرض دكتور دهرمندرا Uh, uh, yes. I saw in your clinic and in your car, in your car even, you are all with burning camphor. Why? Yeah. See, camphor, camphor, if you see, it's a very good to open the nasal passages, nasal passages. Hmm. Like, like in the mountains, mountains, the people who have a problem of breathing in high altitude mm. they carry camphor okay they carry camphor mm. so if they have a problem like breathlessness they can't breathe mm. they just smell camphor and they breathe well this is the first thing your breathing improves okay. second camphor has a quality camphor has a quality mm. it kills the virus and bacteria around you yeah it is his property, natural property. Hmm. It kills the virus and bacteria. If you see in Hindu religion hmm. or many other religion, when they are doing certain programs like yeah. puja, they, put they burn, they, they burn oh. camphor. Hmm. They can burn some other thing. Why camphor? Why camphor? Hmm. Because during the time of pija, puja, hmm. so many people are there. Uh, and uh, you know there can be problems of viruses bacteria they can spread to each other mm. they burn camphor the scientific reason is to get rid of bacteria and viruses okay mm. this is the basic why they burn camphor mm. so in my clinic and in my car mm. in my car i don't burn camphor in my car mm. but i keep camphor in a pocket Okay. In my car, the smell of camper camper comes. Mm. So whoever is sitting in my car, they are not affected with any problem because of the camper. In the clinic, we burn it. Okay. In the clinic, we burn it. In the home, we burn it. Mm. In the home also, we burn it. Second, very important thing, camper doesn't allow negative energy to enter. Okay. In your house, in your clinic, in your mind. Camphor has a property. It doesn't allow negative energy to enter. And in Ayurveda, mm. camphor is used to treat asthma, yeah. cough cold problem, mm. and even heart disease. Even heart disease. Mm. Camphor is used in as a medicine purpose. Mm. So camphor is very important and it's easily available. Is easily available. So these are the properties of camphor. Last question about uh, Corona, Doctor uh, Duby. Can you diagnostic Corona just by by pulse reading? Yeah, seventy percent S. Yes. Hmm. In Corona and in cough and cold patient, the pulse is mostly same. Hmm. Hmm. Like if you see one Corona patient. And there is one patient who is having cough problem and cold problem and fever problem. Okay. Both of them pulse is mostly same, mm. mostly same. Mm. But in Corona, you get three dosh pulse, three dosh means okay. all the three pulse will beat at a time. Mm. And all the three pulse would be weak. Mm. You, you feel light and it would be the beats would be fast. Okay. The beats mm. would be fast because their lungs are not working. Mm. They have to breathe faster. Mm. Now, it depends on the doctor yeah. how smart he is. Mm. Mm. How smart he is because Corona is a new problem to the world. Mm. It's a new problem. Yeah, of course. So, it depends on the smartness of the doctor mm. 
how he is finding it out okay but yeah of course 70% you can diagnose by pulse this is what i did in my clinic people came with the problem of cough cold and fever hmm. and i have asked them to test for corona okay and believe me 90% have been founded corona positive mm -hmm. you discover it before by pulse only that they have pulse is a very very easily you can find corona patient by pulse reading dr uh, darman that would be my last question in this very interested uh, interview it is about you we know mm -hmm. that you are brahman and a spiritual yeah what is the impact of ayurveda in your spiritual life ha huh. you it has made you more spiritual mm -hmm. corona has not only made me more spiritual but all over india people have become more spiritual okay. people started to stay at home started to doing puja at home being more pure people started to become more and more pure yeah people started to take early morning bath mm. you know mm. so the pure clothes mm. pure food mm. lifestyle and diet people have changed they have stopped eating outside food they have stopped eating meat chicken non veg mm. so most of them they have become automatically spiritual i was spiritual i have become more spiritual now we wanted more space we started to have more space yeah we started to be with own self mm. like before what used to happen you used to go with your friends you used to go for movies you used to do all sort of things mm. but now you started to stay with yourself you started to meditate mm. so this has become more mm. like i was practicing spiritually in the morning now i am starting to practicing in the night also okay so it has changed not only me 50% of india they have changed mm. because of corona okay okay so it has some uh, positive aspect and positive side not some i will say 100% positive aspect it was very important people needed it people needed the change see everything happens for some purpose mm. everything happens for some purpose okay sa akhtasir jawabah al akhir sa'altuhu madha athrat anta tantami ila aila brahman wa aila ruhiya wa madha athrat al corona fi fi matarak al ruhi wal jawab anna lastu faqat ana walakin al hind bi asriha aailati wal mujtama' ma' hadha al baqa' fi al manzil hadha al tawajjuh نحو الداخل لاننا كنا في داخل بيوتنا جعلنا اكثر روحانيه واعطانا المزيد من ذاتنا ومن العوده الى هذه الذات هذا باختصار وكما قلت لكم سنترجم هذه المقابله والنصائح عن مواجهه الكورونا ونضعها على الموقع على الانترنت ونرسل لكم اللينك الرابط كي تقرؤوها وتتابعوها دكتور هارمندرا دوبي وي ووز فيري هابي ليسن تو يو ثانك يو ثانك يو جيف اس ا بيكوز بيبل يو نو زي ار ريلي سكيرد اند فور ذا فيرست تايم ميبي ميبي زي سو وان دكتور هو فيسد كورونا اند زي ار تيلينج them not be afraid i faced it and there is no problem you have to uh, i have more courage to be. hari om hari om hari om hari om hari om esker for the next time dr jagvin you have to tell him something me say esker dr damendra pour écrire dans le chat could you dr damendra write in the chat the name of uh, herbal medicine that you give for corona because you you see give yeah, some I, name uh, or is no, uh, he already uh, jack he already wrote to me and i translated it in arabic i will that what i was uh, telling it but in arabic you didn't understand uh, i will put it on the site 
in Arabic and in, in English. So everyone, and I will send this link to everyone. You, okay. everyone can see it. Kind of prescription. In English yes. or in Arabic, so no problem at yes, all yes. in this problem. Ashwine in English is Karvi. Ashwine is Karvi. Thank you. Namaskar. Hariom. God Hariom. bless everyone. Namaskar. Hariom ji. Bye. 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 La parole est à vous, mon uh, cher professeur Vigne. Le sujet était crucial et très important. C'est pour ça que vous devez traduire encore un petit peu. Bref, maintenant à vous la parole pour nous guider dans une. Vas-y, la parole est à vous. D'accord. Donc oui, aujourd'hui, le sujet, c'est l'attention. On va faire deux sessions sur l'attention. Et donc, on va commencer directement par de la pratique. On va faire le home comme d'habitude. On associe à la récitation du home l'attention à l'axe central du corps. توجيه الانتباه نحو المحور المركزي في الجسم. Comme l'habitude, le A correspond euh, au centre du périnée. Et comme قلنا ال A مقرونة بمركز البطن. Le Muladhara Chakra. حيث Muladhara Chakra. Le O au centre du cœur, Anahata. Et le M au centre du front, Jnana Chakra. Yeah, Ajna, Ajna, le Jnana is knowledge. Enfin, Jnana, c'est la connaissance. Et Ya qui revient vers soi. Donc, c'est le chakra de la connaissance orienté vers son intérieur. Le chakra de la connaissance spirituelle. Maintenant, on revient au souffle naturel. L'attention va vers le souffle naturel.
pour mieux observer un mouvement, c'est bien d'être à un point fixe. Kay nastati an nuraqib haraka ma min al muhim an nakuna nahnu fi nuqtatin sabita. Un point fixe très utile pour observer le souffle, c'est le milieu de la base de la cloison nasale. Wa hunaka nuqta sabita muhimma li muraqabat an nafas innaha an nuqta allati hiya tahta et donc c'est un point qu'on appelle Vajradanta en sanskrit, la dent de foudre. Ce n'est pas si facile d'en prendre conscience directement. Donc, en début de session, ne pas hésiter à pincer entre les deux ongles de pouce le milieu, le, le, cette dent de foudre. Ça fait un peu comme une piqûre d'acupuncture sur ce point. Donc ça fait un petit peu mal, mais ce n'est pas un problème. Ça fait une stimulation réflexe. La respiration reste complètement naturelle. Observez comment la respiration naturelle n'est jamais complètement la même. Maintenant, remet les mains sur le giron, sur euh, les, les chevilles. On détend les bras, les trapèzes, les mâchoires. Et on sent le souffle qui va et vient. On imagine que la dent de foudre est comme une braise rougeoyante. Et le souffle attise la braise, elle la fait brûler de plus en plus. Et l'activation de cette braise nous donne la joie de l'attention et l'attention à la joie.
nous revient au souffle. On peut se représenter les pouces de lumière qui continuent à pincer la dent de foudre. La braise devient de plus en plus chaude. De rouge, elle devient orange. Puis ensuite, rose et blanche. Maintenant, on va faire une méditation qui m'est venue euh, récemment. Je ne l'ai jamais fait faire à des groupes. Bien que j'ai fait des méditations qui soient assez proches. Et donc, euh, on peut masser le milieu de la crête du tibia. C'est dans, dans la jambe, n'est-ce pas? Oui, dans la jambe, c'est ça. Donc, oui. Et on peut prendre le côté droit. Donc, avec la main droite, on masse le milieu du tibia droit. ندلك باليد اليمين عظمة التيبيا الفخذ et donc maintenant on inspire par ce point et on expire par le milieu du dos en le poussant vers l'avant إذن الآن نتنشق نشق من هذه النقطة في التيبيا في الفخذ ونسفر من وسط الظهر وبالوقت عينه الظهر نرسله إلى الأمام نشده إلى الأمام سي كوم سي الكولون فيرتيبرال دفني ان تيبيا اي دونك لو ميليو لا كولون فيرتيبرال كوريسبوند او ميليو دو تيبيا دو لوميير و هكذا وسط العمود الفقري يقترن بوسط التيبيا عظمة الفخذ Sur chaque expiration, c'est comme une, si une main de lumière poussée vers l'avant le milieu du dos, ça permet de se redresser, d'avoir une meilleure attention.
maintenant, on met la main droite sur le, le milieu de la cuisse droite, peut-être même un peu vers l'extérieur. En acupuncture, l'extérieur de la cuisse, ce sont les méridiens yang. Ce sont les méridiens qui redressent le dos et stimulent la tension. Donc, on continue le même type d'exercice. Sur l'inspiration, on inspire par le milieu de la cuisse. Sur l'expiration, on expire par le milieu du dos en le poussant légèrement vers l'avant. On sent qu'en poussant le milieu du dos vers l'avant, la cage thoracique et le cœur s'ouvrent. C'est comme si l'énergie d'action des jambes devenait énergie d'affection au niveau du cœur. C'est la même énergie qui se transforme. Quand on inspire en passant maintenant par le milieu du tibia, et le milieu de la cuisse et en allant jusqu'au milieu du dos, on peut dire action. Et quand on expire par le milieu du dos en le poussant vers l'avant, on dit affection et on sent l'ouverture du cœur qui va vers les autres. Et qu'on inspire en pensant action ou qu'on expire en pensant affection, on le fait avec une attention complète. Maintenant, c'est la fin de la journée, on va se relaxer un petit peu, donc fais-vous allonger avec la position de l'empereur. Donc, vous souvenez la position de l'empereur, croisez les chevilles et les mains. Donc, 
في الأعلى ومتدليتان واحدة عن اليمين وواحدة عن اليسار La cheville du dessus correspond à la narine fermée. Et au niveau des mains, donc les deux mains sont l'une sur l'autre, euh, avec la main du dessus qui correspond à la narine fermée. اليدان واحدة على الأخرى اليد العليا هي أيضا من جهة المنخار المقفل. Et vous mettez les deux mains en contact direct avec la peau du ventre donc vous soulevez la la chemise la chemise de corps. اليدان تتصلان تحتكان ببشرة الجسم من من في منطقة الهارة تحت الذكرى تحت السرة. Le contact peau à peau au niveau du hara est très apaisant. Sans doute, ça rappelle la présence du cordon ombilical, donc la sécurité absolue de l'enfant dans le sein de sa mère. الاطمئنان الكامل للطفل عندما يكون في أحشاء أمه. كما un petit prince dans son palais. كما لو كان مثل الأمير الصغير في قصره. Fitchnatan explique qu'en vietnamien ils appellent l'utérus de la femme enceinte le palais du bébé. تيتشناتان المعلم البودي يشرح أنهم في الفيتنام اللغة الفيتنامية يسمون رحم الأم يسمونه قصر الجنين. donc cette chaleur au niveau du hara nous rappelle le cordon ombilical et nous rappelle le palais qu'on habitait avant notre naissance. هذه الحرارة على مستوى الهارة تذكرنا بهذا القصر رحم الأم الذي سكناه قبل ولادتنا. ورمين نوتر اتنسيون اي اسو سنتيمان دو ريسبيراسيون ناتوريل او نيفو دو هارا دو شالور ناتوريل او نيفو دو هارا. نوجه انتباهنا على مستوى الهارة وعلى هذه الحرارة في مكان مطرح الهارة. ونشعر أننا في حالة اطمئنان مئة بالمئة. ونحاول من وقت إلى وقت أن نكون 100% مركزين. ونحاول أن نبقى آنيا ومن لحظة إلى أخرى متنبهين مئة بالمئة. Le Bouddha disait quelque chose de très important à ces moines ou moniales. Bouddha كان يقول شيئا مهما جدا لرهبانه وراهباته. Ils avaient renoncé à leur héritage de famille pour devenir moines. Et il leur disait, votre héritage de famille, votre patrimoine, c'est votre attention. L'attention crée de la richesse. Parce que ça aide à développer la richesse de toutes les autres vertus. Toutes les autres vertus, quand on y réfléchit, demandent de l'attention pour être développées. 
كل الفضائل الأخرى تتطلب انتباها كي تنمو وتتطور Au XXe siècle, les grands professeurs de psychologie occidentaux pensaient que l'attention était une donnée euh, presque génétique et qu'on ne pouvait pas la développer. Mais ceux qui ont un tant soit peu d'expérience de méditation savent que l'attention est comme un muscle qu'on peut l'entraîner et le développer. Et bien sûr, cette intention nous aide considérablement quand elle est dirigée vers l'intérieur. Atisha, un très grand maître tibétain, disait très directement ceci. Atisha, un très tibétain, disait très directement ceci. L'instruction euh, euh, secrète suprême, c'est de sans cesse faire attention à son propre esprit. Donc, on observe non seulement le mouvement naturel de la respiration, mais aussi le mouvement naturel de l'esprit. Donc, quand on comprend son esprit, on peut le changer. Quand on change son esprit, on peut le libérer. Quand on comprend son esprit, on peut le changer. Quand on change son esprit, on peut le libérer. Ça correspond à une définition de la méditation elle-même. Quand on regarde les 50 ans d'enseignement du Bouddha, il a insisté sur l'attention du début à la fin. 
نصف قرن من تعليم بوذا كان يركز دوما فيه منذ البداية وإلى النهاية على التنبه على الانتباه Il disait que l'attention est utile en toute chose. Et qu'il n'y a pas de problème qui ne puisse être résolu par l'attention. Maintenant, très attentivement, on se rassoit et on se met sur son siège pour le Aum final. Et en montant avec le Aum, on transforme l'énergie. وعندما نصعد هذا الأم نحول الطاقة. نترانسفورم الإنرجية فيتال دو باسين والإنرجية أفكتيف دو توراكس إن إنرجية سبيريتوال أو نيفو دو تروزيام أي. عندما ونحول بذلك طاقة الحوض وطاقة القلب إلى طاقة روحية في الرأس. On transforme l'énergie du A ou du O dans l'énergie du M fermé.
Maintenant, on peut saluer les chacun chez nous, mais on fait un groupe quand même, on a fait la même méditation, donc on se salue les uns les autres, et on, avec les mains jointes, et on salue le, le soi en nous. On salue le soi dans les autres aussi. On parle de la dualité qui est notre expérience quotidienne du monde, symbolisée par les deux mains jointes. Et on revient au centre du cœur, c'est-à-dire au soi, à la conscience pure. Et là, on trouve la non-dualité, Advaita, Dvaita, dualité. Bien, on peut faire un, des échanges maintenant. Oui, il y en a quelques-unes, mais on n'a pas assez de temps. On va essayer de les faire passer au fur euh, du temps oui. disponible. Donc, première question, vous, avez, vous nous avez enseigné jusqu'à présent des dizaines de méthodes de méditation. On est hésitant laquelle est la meilleure pour la pratique quotidienne. Sur quels critères faut-il se baser pour choisir, ce, pour choisir celle qu'on pratique chaque jour. Je traduis « Allam tana hatta l'an asharat turuk li ta'amul »« Wa bitna ha'irin ayyuhal afdal li moumarsa ta'amul il yawmi »« Ayyou ma'yar yumkin an nastani da ilay »« Kain nakhtara tariqa ta'amulina al yawmi » Donc je pense que c'est bien de toutes les essayer suffisamment. Euh, azun annahu mina al-muhim an euh, nujarriba kul hazihi turuk bima yakfi » Et comme ça, on sait leur effet et ensuite on peut les employer selon les besoins du jour. Et certaines méditations, une fois qu'on les a suffisamment essayées, on les mémorise. C'est comme une graine qu'on sème. Quand les conditions seront favorables, on se mettra à pratiquer cette pratique intensément et on aura plus de résultats. Et donc, on peut avoir un type de méditation principale et quelques-unes secondaires. Et euh, donc, il euh, faut être pragmatique, essayer et euh, euh, insister sur ce qui marche pour nous. Donc, 
Bien sûr, ce n'est pas souhaitable de faire toutes les méditations tous les jours, mais savoir qu'elles existent et les garder dans sa boîte à outils. Et... Deux, la méditation de pas sûr. L'objectif est-il de perturber ou affaiblir les idées et les sensations perturbatrices et comment peut-on y arriver oui, donc c'est vrai que c'est une bonne expression. On veut comme ça perturber les perturbations. Les émotions perturbatrices sont comme des dictatrices ou des dictateurs. Et en leur disant pas sûr, c'est comme si on, le peuple se révoltait contre elle. C'est pas sûr qu'on doit suivre les émotions perturbatrices comme un peuple opprimé suit le dictateur. Et comme souvent, c'est très bien de travailler très proche des émotions du corps. Par exemple, s'il y a une petite sensation de douleur qui remonte dans une partie du corps qu'on observe. On dit pas sûr. C'est-à-dire pas sûr qu'il faille se tendre contre cette douleur, vouloir l'éliminer. Et à ce moment-là, très souvent, rien qu'en faisant ça, la douleur se détend et disparaît. Et il en va de même pour les sensations de tension reliées aux émotions perturbatrices comme la colère, la peur, etc. Donc, en conclusion, appliquer le pas sûr à son impulsivité en restant très proche des, du, du corps. Mais il n'y a pas besoin de l'appliquer aux valeurs fondamentales de la pratique spirituelle, comme par exemple la vigilance et la bienveillance. C'est sûr qu'il faut développer la vigilance et la bienveillance. Vous avez dit que la peur est l'autre face de l'avidité. Donc, pour éliminer la peur, faut-il absolument effacer la, le désir? Est-ce est si simple de vivre sans désir? Oui, donc je pense qu'il est important de distinguer l'avidité des désirs euh, habituels. 
أظن أنه من المهم أن نميز بين الجشع والرغبات العادية de distinguer aussi les désirs des besoins. Et de distinguer les désirs qui nous tirent vers le haut de ceux qui nous tirent vers le bas. Et donc ça fait un gros travail de clarification. Et c'est le travail de la euh, méditation. Et donc, il euh, y a un maître tibétain, euh, Tenpai, euh, Tenpai Nima, qui est mort en 1926. Il dit comment tra, euh, euh, utiliser la joie et le plaisir dans le sens du dharma. Et il prend une image simple qui est très profonde. Il dit que la joie ou le plaisir, c'est comme un feu. Que le dharma, c'est comme l'eau dans un récipient. Et donc, il faut faire passer l'énergie de la joie dans le dharma. Comme l'énergie du feu passe à travers le métal de la casserole dans l'eau pour la faire bouillir. Et mais beaucoup de gens, même des gens religieux, ne comprennent pas ça. Et c'est comme si chercher à faire bouillir de l'eau en mettant un récipient en bois plein d'eau sur le feu, en bois. À ce moment-là, le ne chauffera pas. C'est-à-dire leur pratique spirituelle n'aura pas d'énergie. C'est bon Oui. Dernière question pour aujourd'hui. Comment peut-on pratiquement associer un son au son du silence, comme vous l'avez proposé dans la dernière méditation Et bien, on peut changer la couleur des consonnes. Enfin, des voyelles, pardon. Et donc, euh, par exemple, le son du silence est un peu comme un A ou un O continu. Et si on parle français, on peut transformer ce A ou ce O continu dans le son WA de joie. Et donc, on imagine que tout l'espace résonne avec ce son vocalique wa. Et 
Si on veut méditer sur l'être pur, c'est pas facile a priori. Mais on peut imaginer que tout l'espace est pénétré du son A. Hey, si on est français, si on est arabe, on adapte, oui. يمكننا عندها أن نتخيل أن كل الفضاء محشي بهذا صوت الـ A. Et on associe ce son A dans tout l'espace au grésillement dans du silence qui est déjà dans tout l'espace. ونقرن هذا الصوت A بوشوشات الصمت الـ A في كل الفضاء. La seconde méthode, c'est de partir d'un mantra. الطريقة الثانية هي أن نستخدم مانترا وتجاوز الأحرف غير أحرف العلة تدريجيا عندها يكون عندنا تتابع حروف علة par exemple, Om Namo Shivaya, ça donne O, A, O, I, A, A. Om Namo Shivaya, c'est O, A, O, I, A. Et on récite de plus en plus vite cette succession de voyelles pour qu'elles se fondent les unes dans les autres. Et donc ça fait O A O I A O A O I A O A O I A O A O I A O A O I A Et donc euh, ensuite on fait aller ces voyelles confondues dans le son du silence comme un O continu ou un continu. Indha nutliqo hadhi al aswat fi sawt al samt O A U. Et à ce moment-là donc euh, on convertit le mantra en son du silence. وعندها نحول المانترا إلى صوت صوت. Et une variante de cette méthode pour terminer est très simple. On se suspend sur une des voyelles du mantra. وهناك أيضا طريقة أخرى نقطع على صوت مانترا. Par exemple, on fait Om Namo. Om Namo. دون أن نكمل ال et à ce moment-là, on confond la voyelle continue, par exemple le haut, avec le grésillement du silence. Et on entend le haut et le grésillement du silence dans tout l'espace. Là, on va terminer la session, mais si vous avez 10 minutes, essayez de le faire dès maintenant. Dès qu'on aura fermé l'ordinateur, vous ne bougez pas. Vous faites cette pratique pour ne pas oublier les instructions. Oui, ou bien on peut la faire la prochaine fois. Si tu veux, avec nous. D'accord, d'accord. Oui, c'est aussi une forme d'un exercice d'attention. Oui, oui. Pour 10 minutes, ça sera bien. Oui, oui. Voilà. Ben, oui, on a eu suffisamment de temps aujourd'hui et c'était vraiment quelque chose de très intéressant avec l'interview soit de docteur Dharmendra Doubi ou avec ce que, cette méditation sur l'attention et sur ça. Alors, ben, oui, j'ai euh, pris en note ce que disait Dharmendra Doubi, les conseils, euh, Doubi, les conseils sur euh, l'Ayurveda contre le coronavirus. Je vais essayer de mettre ça au propre et de te l'envoyer en anglais et oui. puis on pourrait l'envoyer à Darmen Radoubé pour qu'il complète, qu'il corrige oui. parce qu'elle est dans des... Il m'a envoyé un texte. Ah d'accord. Il m'a envoyé un texte que c'est un texte en anglais bien sûr que j'ai traduit en arabe. Et D'accord. Et ce texte, je vais le, le mettre sur le site. Oui, sur mon site et je vais envoyer le le link, le lien à tout le monde entre autres vous. D'accord, ben moi aussi. Ça, Puis je verrai peut-être que je pourrais le traduire en français, oui. en complétant avec des choses qu'il a dit aujourd'hui, parce que oui. ça peut intéresser le public français aussi. Oui, c'est intéressant parce que lui, il se propose qu'on peut, sans vaccin, prévenir ce, cette, cette maladie, et il a eu déjà l'expérience. 
quelqu'un qui me dit qu'il a consulté 1500 euh, malades du corona, oui. il n'a jamais été euh, donc, contaminé. C'est intéressant oui, oui. comme cas. Oui, oui c'est intéressant, oui, oui. oui, oui. Donc, voilà. on, on voit moi ce texte, oui, enfin avec les autres. Oui. Et puis, j'essaierai d'en faire quelque chose en français aussi. Entendu. Entendu. Et à la, à la prochaine, à mercredi prochain, comme d'habitude. Très bien. Merci. Au revoir. Allez, on, allez, on, allez, on. allez, on. allez on.